The Mother Road, Main Street USA, Will Rogers Highway. Those are the other names for Route 66. When people think of Route 66, they think of the song, they think of the TV show, going on a road trip, the Great American Road Trip. Route 66 defined the road trip. It gave meaning to the word Americana. But how did that road come about? Why was it so popular? Why is it not what it used to be? This is a brief history of Route 66. Believe it or not, the origins of Route 66 started before cars were even invented. In 1857, almost 30 years before the automobile, Lieutenant Edward Fitzgerald Beale was ordered to build a government-funded wagon road along the 35th parallel. This became a big chunk of the future roadway of Route 66. Around the 1890s through the mid to late 1920s, when the automobiles were still very new and before the highway system, there were auto trails. Auto trails were marked by private organizations simply to help travelers get around. Anyone could set up a trail. Anyone. And that is probably a topic for another video. In 1916, Congress enacted some legislations for public highways, but a more comprehensive act was passed in 1925. Cyrus Avery from Tulsa, Oklahoma, and John Woodrow from Springfield, Missouri lobbied for a route from Chicago to LA following the 1925 highway plans. On April 30, 1926, the new highway route from Chicago to LA was given the designation of 66. This was the official beginning of Route 66 and it was now one of the original U.S. highways. Luckily, there were all these auto trails to be used. They had to be upgraded, which means they had to be paved, but that took some time. Route 66 would use portions of three auto trails, the Lone Star Route that went from Cameron, Louisiana to Chicago, Illinois, the Ozark Trail System, and the Transcontinental National Old Trails Road from St. Louis to Louisiana. The auto trails weren't followed exactly and were shortened to make travel easier and construction cheaper. I mean, this is the U.S. government. It was built to connect urban and rural areas along the route. You know, to connect people and make it easier to get from one place to another. And as they were building it, many chain stores started popping up all along the route to help boost their sales. 1927, the U.S. Highway 66 Association was established with John T. Woodruff as president I'm sure you remember him. He was one of those guys that lobbied for the whole route. The association played an important role in popularizing Route 66. 1928, the U.S. Highway 66 Association started to spread the word about the new highway. What did they do to get the people on the road? Well, they ran a foot race on it. From L.A. to New York City, 3,423 miles. Really, they did that, and it was actually successful. The LA to Chicago legs were of course run along the Route 66. Will Rogers and other famous people met runners along the race. 155 people started it, 55 runners finished it. That is a good percentage in my book. And by the way, it took 84 days to complete the race in 1928. That is 40 miles per day. In 1930, they had a few realignments. Between Springfield and East St. Louis, they shifted from Illinois Route 4 kind of east to where I-55 is now. And then downtown St. Louis, they kind of moved it around a little bit too. In 1932, the U.S. Highway Association ran its first ad inviting people to drive the highway to see the 1932 Olympics in L.A. And it worked. In the 1930s, it quickly became a preferred truck route because it was mostly flat. Due to the Dust Bowl, many families migrated west to find work and Route 66 took them there from their places like Oklahoma, Arkansas, Kansas, and Texas. Because of all of this traffic, many small businesses opened up to service these travelers. New restaurants, gas station, and motels were popping up all along the way. In 1936, the highway was finally extended all the way to Santa Monica, ending at Highway 101 at Olympic and Lincoln Boulevards. In 1937, New Mexico removed Santa Fe saving four hours, and punishing Republicans in Santa Fe. In 1938, Route 66 was finally completely paved. Do you remember that foot race? That was before it was completely paved. 
In 1939, World War II started another migration of workers going west to California to help with the war-related industries. Military equipment was also moved down the highway and a section of it had to be upgraded to a divided highway just to accommodate the military vehicles. In 1940, LA added the first freeway to the Route 66, the Arroyo Seca Parkway. Later in the 40s, many sections upgraded to divided highways. 1950 showed a growth of vacationers passing through some of the most beautiful parts of the U.S. Being flat and easy to navigate made the highway very popular. Roadside attractions start popping up. TP-shaped motels, Indian curio shops, and of course, the Big Texan with their 72-ounce steak. Eat it in an hour, and it's free. Oh, and the Merrimack Caverns where Jesse James head out. Or did he? In my opinion, this is what we truly think of when we think of Route 66. This is when Americana was born. This is what started the whole concept of a road trip. This is what a road trip should be. Too bad that really didn't last very long. Highway bypasses were getting built to help travelers get around congested areas or just to shorten travel time. This helped shorten travel time, but also decreased the people stopping at many of these great places along the highway. In 1953, they completely bypassed Oatman, Arizona, removing one of the most dangerous sections of Route 66, but then by the 60s, Oatman was almost completely abandoned. In 1956, the Interstate Highway Act was passed. Interstates are meant to keep cars moving, moving past all the downtown mom and pop shops, gas stations, roadside attractions, and all the cool stuff that Route 66 made popular. This was the beginning of the end. By the late 1960s, most rural sections of the highway in New Mexico were replaced by Interstate 40. Slowly but surely, I-40 and other interstates were replacing Route 66, making access to local businesses a little bit more difficult while making travel easier. In 1976, the U.S. Highway 66 Association was disbanded. You can still travel along Route 66 on the interstate and even some of the original alignments of the highway. There are many preservation activities going on to preserve the Route 66 history so future generations can know what a real road trip is. I'm sure in the future you can just tell your car to do it all for you. From downtown Chicago on Jackson, you follow I-55 to I-44 to I-40 to I-15 to I-10 to the beach in Santa Monica. I have driven it many times and it is a great route. Check out some of these videos that YouTube thinks you might like. If you want to see more videos like this, go ahead and click the subscribe button. Of course, if you like this video, click the like button. And if you have other ideas of more videos, go ahead and leave them in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching.